information is winning the battle, application is winning the war. Even though I acquired the information, I still had to figure out a way to apply it to my life. How you think creates how you feel. How you feel becomes an emotion. Mm -hmm. That emotion becomes a vibration. That vibration becomes a magnet that attracts things to you. You got to understand the power of thought. I preach this and I teach this, but I tell this to my, my, my brothers, my, it's my blood brother. You got to set higher goals for yourself. Welcome to another episode of Bigger Than Goals Podcast with your boy, Sean Shug Amos. Um, I'm here at a special location, a special guest. Um, this man is a motivational speaker pro boxer, uh, entrepreneur, um, and you know, this guy, my man, smart guy, man. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for coming on, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you, bro. Um, so I, I got a chance to look at some of your, your content, your videos or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, you got a strong message, bro. And I, but I want to get to know you a little bit better as far as like, what got you to that place? What got you to get, to want to get the word out? What got you wanting to give back and, and do the things you do? So, so starting off, where you, where you from? I'm from Harlem. Uh huh. Harlem. Um, yeah. And um, I think I think what got me into. I mean, I care. I develop a conscious, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was a combination of different things. You know, kind of like God, kind of like showed me I had a God showed me I had a greater purpose for myself. All right. And. I kind of, I kind of like gave up. So I went to prison. So when I say gave up, I kind of like accepted just um, violence. I accepted, you know, um, being being an animal, being a monster, being a certain type of way, right, right. right? And God brought me out of that. And then from that, he showed me premonitions and visions of, what my true purpose was going to be mm -hmm. for, and that I think that sparked the early um, interest in sharing information and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, then karmically, I did a lot of bad things, right, right, in my life. So I wanted to try to make amends and make certain things right because I believe, like I say a lot. Um, your actions are the lawyers for your soul in God's court when you die. Right. So every deed is like testimony. Facts. Be so, sure. so I'm 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 developing a case for myself. So when I do die, hopefully something that I do or my work is gonna get me to um you know you know to heaven. Uh -huh. Right. So I think those th those two components are kind of like the main reason why. So it's a it's a it's a selfless interest and a selfish interest, right? Makes like sense. Selfish, but it makes sense though. Yeah, for sure. You know, so the self the, the selfish aspect is like, okay, I want to go to heaven. So in order to get there, I gotta do certain things, right? Um and the selfless thing is I developed uh I developed a conscience. So I actually do care about um our people, our interests and mm -hmm. us being successful. Fair. Um so yeah. So yeah, so for on the show, right? We like to talk about like the journey, like what what got you there, what mm -hmm. got you over things. So I feel like, I mean, I'm from the inner city. You from the inner city, and mm -hmm. guys who look like us, we go, we all got ideas, we all want to be something, but we go through these these spots where it get rough for us, and then we stop or we get derailed by prison or deaths or whatever the case may be. When did it start for you as far as like the violence part, and like I got a, at a young age, mm -hmm. and then. At what point did you say, you know what, man, this ain't this ain't it. This ain't this ain't going this ain't gonna be it for me. Like what what made you get to that point? Like what what actual event got it there? Well well <laughs> I I was in the system early, right? Wait. Um shit, early as like five. Really? Yeah. What and, you do at five, and, bro? Kids no, still some kids or something? No, I was in a shelter with my mom's. <laughs> okay. Um and you know, when we when we get up in the morning, we you know parents will take you to school, right? right. I had nobody take me to school, mm -hmm. so I would hang out with some of the older kids that was in the shelter, and they wasn't going to school, so you know they was stealing, doing certain things. And I kind of got like caught in like with that crowd or whatever, um, and then you know separating from my mother, my mother losing custody, going to you know going to group homes, being in drug programs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, now you're in the system, and at that time, it's you know you fight for everything. Once you go to the group home, you know <laughs> the 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 group home will give you like a white tee, pack of boxes, uh, fighting for that everything. They give you uh you know you know certain days we get cookies, 
you fighting for that, right? Right. So I think just being in the system early on is where the violence started. And then um, now I'm hustling and stuff like that. And then going to, uh, you know, Rikers Island, the young C-74, sure. animal lessons, right? <laughs> That's what they call this, animal lessons. So that experience was crazy because you now you really, you fighting for everything, right? So mm-hmm. as soon as you go in there, if you got nice sneakers, the CO are trying to give you what, uh, what they call patakis. Yeah, what, what's patakis for people who don't know? Uh, orange, like these orange kind of a... Little giants, smaller Yeah, you, be, yeah. you wear those, you pussy, basically. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I'm not wearing no patakis. I didn't wear no patakis. So, um, so Rikers Island, that was like the beginning, right? You know, we we, we fighting uh, for chairs, so you can either be on an iron horse, or you got a chair. So you got the you got the mm-hmm. iron. Ho- so this is like the hierarchy, right? Yeah. Like, you you on an iron paint, horse. Paint the picture for us. You on an iron horse. Mm-hmm. And that's the lowest level, right? And then. You 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 standing. You're not. You decided not to be on the iron horse, but you can't really fight. Right. But you got fight in you. But you're not really a good fighter. So yeah, you're just swinging and ducking at that point. Um. No. No. I mean, you just not. You're not with it. But you, you're not really forceful. Got gotcha. you. Just, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um. Then you got the people who have chairs. Then you got the people that's on the team. Mm. Then mm. you got and so people is on the team. They work with the people, the person or people who have the crib, the person right. who has the actual house, uh-huh. right? So like that's that's the system. So um, I, I get there, I'm like, man, I gotta get a chair, man. Fuck those other shit. So I knock a kid out in a cell. Mm. I don't get a chair. So the person who had the had the crib, he tells me like, you know, you're gonna fight again. Right. I said, all right, bet. After I, I fight him, I want to fight you. This episode is brought to you by Goals Activewear. Goals Activewear is a brand that focuses on basketball wear and attire. Goals Activewear popular collection is score society that promotes elite mindsets for athletes and the everyday person. Now, the best part about Goals Activewear is their clothes of quality and it does not shrink. This hoodie that I'm wearing right now is about a 14 ounce hoodie. Really good for the winter season, um, especially if you're done, getting done playing basketball, football, um, and you want something to keep you warm. Goals Active Wear has a hoodie for you to take care of all of your needs. If you're looking for a gift or you want to remind someone to keep an elite mindset, um, go check out goalsactivewear.com. Let's get back to the show. So oh, that's how you make a name for yourself. <laughs> yeah, and and I wasn't I wasn't really trying to like make a name. I just had a real issue with this motherfucker having so much power, right? Like, yeah, fuck, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I never forget this, man. Yo. Shout out to my boy, man. Shout out to my boy. Um, I didn't want to say his name, you know what I mean? But he was a kid from the Bronx, dark skin kid. We we fight in the day room. I never forget this shit, bro. I he I, he was swinging. I just ducked. I closed my eyes and I just put my soul into this right hand. Uh, and bro, I I broke his eye orbit. Shit. And the CEO had locked him in the um. They had locked him in his cell for like two months. That's so crazy, I get here, bro. So he couldn't report it. So now I get the chair. So mm-hmm. now I still I'm hot because. I didn't know, um, man. I didn't know that the guy who had the crib was like, you gotta, you gotta be, you know what I mean? Nice yeah. with your hands. So I just want to fight. So that wasn't the dude you was fighting though. You was fighting somebody else. I fight somebody else. So okay. I, I fought somebody in cell. Uh huh. Um, beat him. Then I fought in the day room. Yeah. Beat him. Uh huh. And then now I still want to fight the other guy. So now they giving me a chair. All right, cool. Yeah, but what's up with us? Right, right. So me and him fought. We fought to steal me. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? He was he was pretty good. You know what I mean? He was pretty good. You know what uh, what we, made, we made him good. We made him good. Um, he caught you a couple times. He know how to box. Uh. I didn't know how to box. Mm-hmm. I just was, I had a lot of power and I just come forward and I just keep swinging. Mm. He knew how to step back. You know, he had yeah, a little, yeah. you know what I mean? He had a little swag. Um, so we end up fighting to steal me and I end up getting on the team. I, he offered me uh, half of the crib, okay? I turned it down. Because having a crib is too much responsibility. You got to monitor the phones and all that other shit. Uh, I'm cool being on the team because I get the lockout. Anyway, long story short, that was kind of like the beginning of like the violence aspect. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Um, and then you had asked another question. You were you saying, I got, I got caught in Rikers Island. No, you good. I, I asked. Um, you, you, you said... Um, when did the violence start? Yeah, when when did it start? And like, when was it like the, the point? Turn the point. The turn the point. point. Southpaw box. 
Mm-hmm. Southport box. Shout out to my man Fed Up. We, you know, we just that's a box. That's a boxing gym. Southport box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it's one of the. I mean, they closed the Southport box now. Okay. Cause I, they they don't have the box no more, which is fucked up for the oh. people that actually experienced that shit. But you had the biggest boxes in the state was uh, I've been to both Southport box and um, a, a, a Green box. Okay. Right. So. Um, I, I get sucker punch, right? So now I'm young. I'm in prison. Fucking big OG. He caught a body in jail. He's a killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he sucker punched me in front of everybody. And I ain't going to lie. I'm going to keep it stacked with you. If he probably would have sucker punched me and nobody seen it, I probably yeah. would let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because this motherfucker was a monster, right? Like, right. just imagine, like, some 6'3 looking motherfucker, no neck, big uh-huh. body motherfucker, right? Sucker punch me, boom, boom, right? Bro, I'm like this. I don't know what to do, right? And in my mind, I did not want to fight him. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to. I was scared to death, right? Um, but I knew <laughs> the the after effects of not fighting him. Yeah, you know what I mean, motherfuckers grabbing at your butt. You know, you know, you got some whole other shit going on. You know what I mean, grabbing at your butt is crazy. No, dog. no, listen, man. Hey, man. I, I, you know I, I, mean? I believe crazy, it. Man. I'm yeah. keeping it real. So. It was like, but I knew fighting him is a possibility that I, I could die, mm. right? And die in the fight or just die like in prison? Period. Like if die you die in prison for real. Okay. I mean, you know, if die in a fight too. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's prison. You know what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, so I tell myself, man, fuck all that. I need to fear one. So that means in late night, eleven o'clock, we go into the showers. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And man. I kind of had to hype myself up, right? Because I was scared. But then in the back of my mind, I said, yo, he, he, you, you sucker punched me and you ain't knocked me out. Yeah. I, said, I mean, that, that, that's what you're That's what I went with, right? Like, okay, that's you ain't knocked me out. Well, I don't know how shit. tough you is, man. You got to show me, champ. So, and I'm hyping myself up. I'm still scared, but I'm like, yeah, you ain't knocked me out, man. You hit like a bitch. You uh-huh. like a, you know what I mean? I'm talking shit. Right. I'm, I'm still kind of scared, but I'm hyping myself up and it's working, right? So we get in the shower. I go, I go to work. I just beat, beat. And cool. he was shocked because he thought I was. And once I hit him, the fear was over. Now we brawling. I yeah. still got power now, right? That's how I usually work. So I stumbled him. Boom. But he hit me. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, this motherfucker hit hard. I'm backing up. I ain't never, you know, I ain't never, you know, been hit like that. Uh-huh. And then when I back up, I see because in the, in the, and we in the showers and it, it's dark. It's dark in the showers. And I see he got the plexiglass. So he got a he got he got a joint like this, mm. plexiglass joint. And the reason why they use a plexiglass because it don't ring on the metal detectors, so they can walk in the yard with it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he hit, I got hit in the head, I got hit twice in the back, so I'm bleeding profusely. So now I'm looking like, oh, I gave it gave me more confidence because I realized that it wasn't his punches, it was the it's knife. Right. Oh, he had it, he had it wrapped in his in his hand or and he just had it in his hand. So uh-huh. so he, he he had his gloves on, right? And he's like this, right? But we in the shower. So if you got, I don't know if you got like, well, ain't nothing in the seat, but if you got like plex, you got plexiglass, right? Give my phone real quick. I'm gonna show you something. So plexiglass, that shit is, you can't. Uh, you it's can't like see this. It. I mean, I got a little dirt on it, so you can't. I mean, picture you in a dark room, but you, you, you no, ain't. I gonna, can see it. I, got, I can, I dig what you're saying. It'd be hard for you to really, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he, boom, 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 he's stabbing me. Yeah, I'm thinking he punching me. So when I take a step back, I see the glare. I see, like the light hit it. I see. Oh, you got the. Oh, uh, why? You got the. And you ain't feel it though. You ain't nah, feel. You I'm ain't rolling, nah, bro. We ain't gonna. I mean, adrenaline rush. I ain't see. I felt. I felt. I felt this. Right. I mean, Ooh, I feel that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying, but it feel like a punch. I'm rolling, bro. I ain't. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. But he's stabbing me. So when I take a step back, I look. I'm like, oh, you got. You got plexi Oh, that's good. Oh, bitch. I, oh, I, I, yeah. So it, it kind of like. It, it up a little bit. It, it ignited something in me, right? Mm-hmm. And they say you never know if you're a warrior until you're in that situation. I'm covered in blood. I'm rolling. I hit him again. Boom. He dropped, you know, he dropped the knife. Right. Um, and I slip. <laughs> I slip full of my back. Boom. He picks up the knife and he goes to jump on top of me. Right. Like he's trying to. So I'm, I come like this. I threw that motherfucker over me. I don't know to this day, man. I don't know how I threw that motherfucker about three feet off me. That's that adrenaline rush. And I jumped shit. up, two pieces, beep, bing. He dropped knife again, and he goes run out the bathroom. 
I go to chase him out the bathroom. I'm chasing him out the bathroom. When I'm chasing out the bathroom, his man came from the side and hit me in the cheek. I thought he cut. I thought he ripped me. He ended up. He ended up stabbing me. Right. And he like, yo. How many times you got stabbed like that? Um, one in, one in the head, one in the fit, one in the, like right here, like four, maybe three or four times in the back, and then one right here. You can't even wow. see unless I turn like that. Uh, know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, now, so I'm chasing him, and his man hit me from the side. Pause. And I thought he, I was so that shit took. I thought he cut me. You know what I mean? Right. But he, but because because and sometimes you get when you get, when they, you cut somebody. You cut them so hard, it, it feel like a punch. Uh. So the person don't really know they cut. They thought they got stole on. I thought I'm like, no, he's gonna rip me. So now we, now I'm, I'm, my back is against the wall. I'm looking at both. I'm like, what's up? Let's go. They're like, you out of here? You out of here? I'm not going nowhere, nigga. So everybody kind of like broke it up. It calmed down. Uh -huh. Then that same night, I sent a kite to my man. Look, bro, niggas did me bad. Boom, boom, boom. I need a gun. You know what I'm saying? The guy that stabbed me found out that I sent the kite. Uh. He dropped a slip on me the next morning. They called me to the sergeant office. I, I, they called me to the sergeant office and they said, turn around, take your shirt off. So I turned around, take my shirt off. They said, what's that? I said, I was playing basketball. Right. They, said, they said, why are you going to the infirmary? I said, I don't know. I figured he'll. It's a scratch. Right. They said, you're lying. You're going, to, <laughs> you're going to the hole. So they sent, me, they sent me to the box for 30 days for unreported injuries. Mm. So... What's the point of them doing that? Like, what's the, you don't report changes because they punish you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this is why dudes fold and they rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you when like, all right, um, it's like a punishment for not telling. What was your first step to saying like, you know, I'm changing my life when you got out of prison? Like, what what what, what deed did you do? What uh, yeah yeah. What, <laughs> what, 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 which direction did you go? Me and my man kidnapped somebody, and it it, it was like. Like, it, it just didn't feel the same. You know, we fucked up. We both on parole, right? Uh -huh. I ain't gonna say my man's name. Shout out, you know what I'm saying? We all gotta do his name. <laughs> Yo, like... Shout out, man. We both on parole, man. Uh -huh. Both on parole, man. And, and it was like, I, I had all these good intentions, right? But parole is hard. Like, it's hard. Mm. Coming out of prison, I ain't got no job, I ain't got no money. And my man on some, he on some... Bullshit, but like man, fuck that. These motherfuckers that hit soft, ah, uh -uh. and <laughs> so we 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 duct taping the motherfucker, and I'm feeling bad. Like it don't. It's like I'm not really. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Your heart ain't in it. Like, yeah, you, yeah, like you know what I'm really, saying. You're not that angry no yeah, more. I didn't mummify the motherfucker. He's like this. Like I didn't spider man. Shoot, no, I didn't spider man the motherfucker up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know and. So he laid it on the floor looking like a fly that got caught in a spider's web. You know what I'm saying? We taking all the work. You know what I'm saying? And I just remember feeling so fucking stupid. Mm. Like it just felt so, it just, it didn't feel right. And, you know, we, we you know, um, made a couple dollars. And I'm on parole. This is, I kept thinking I'm on parole. We got two duffel bags full of drugs. It's broad day. Uh. We walking out of building. I got I got a fucking gun in a chicken box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and we walk. We trying to walk out regular. You know what I'm saying? We walk like, right past police. That's wild. Bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and 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 we trying to flag a cab. We just walking regular, right? And the whole time in my mind, I'm like, yo, what the fuck am I doing? Uh. Like, I really. It was like I had an out of body experience. Mm. You know what I mean? And that was like, that was it for me. I was like, I'm man, fuck this shit. I'm gonna have to just go 100 percent legit. I don't give a fuck how, um, how hard it is or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna go through it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's that's, that's a tough job, bro. Cause I, I ain't gonna front though. I wasn't expecting that. I thought you was gonna say I started like volunteer coaching or some shit. Nah, nah. <laughs> Sorry, <if laughs> that I mean, should be bullshit. Yeah. I no, mean. because because the first because look, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon, right? Right. So. Information is winning the battle. Application is winning the war. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So even though I acquired the information, I still had to figure out a way to apply it to my life. Mm. Right? And I was closer to the old me than to the new me at that time. Gotcha, gotcha. Right? Uh -huh. So the my reflex, like the, the reaction was to just revert back to the old me. Mm. But God... 
created a conscience now. So I, I couldn't authentically revert back to the old me because the old me didn't have no conscience. Yeah, it was blank. His right. head was blank. I didn't, you know what I mean? You ain't know no better. Yeah, yeah, but well, I didn't care neither. Like it, mm -hmm. it was no, it wasn't a care, right? Yeah. So now I have this conscience. So now I'm looking at dude. I'm feeling bad for the guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm leaving. I'm leaving the door open a little bit. You know what I mean? But before we leave, I I put a little loose in the, in the duct tape so I know he could get out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's the, so, and I know what I'm doing is wrong. Mm. But that's God, right? Right. Because now God is like, you're going to know that you're choosing this path. So everything that comes with this shit, you know why you're getting it. Because before destruction is warning. Mm. So God gave me the warning in the form of a conscience. Mm. God gave me the warning in, 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 in the form of guilt. So mm. it's like, ah, man, this shit ain't right. Mm. Ah, fuck it, man. I, I'm, I'm cool with this shit. I'm, I, I, this ain't for me no more. Mm. I'm cool, man. I'm, I'm I'm done. You talk a lot about God, energy, spirit. Where where you learn that part at? Did you, that was that something you learned when you was in jail, or was it something you learned like when you had that after you had that out of body experience? Yeah, yeah. When, when I was mean, that? Um, well, it's, well, it, it was a combination of different things, right? Because in jail, I did a lot of reading, mm. right? Um, give, give us a good book. Give us a good book to read. Right? Um, well, that, I mean, like a book that changed your life when you was in there. You was like, fuck, like this or this. Um, the Quran, this. definitely for sure. Um, so I would say definitely uh, the Quran, um, Think and Grow Rich by by Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Hill. Yeah, that's my dad. That turned my life around. Too. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by, yeah, for by, sure. by, by, by Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. And the thing that changed me so much from that book was he said, "Never say you can't, always say how." Mm -hmm. So that was what I had right. pulled from that book. Um, from Think and Grow Rich, it was if you can uh, conceive it, you can achieve, achieve. it. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, if I have these ideas. That means I have the ability to make this idea right. a reality. Mm -hmm. I would not have the idea if I couldn't make it a reality. So I've always had these grand duois ideas. I always had big, big dreams and big ideas. Mm -hmm. So, wow, when I read that book, it gave me a different level of confidence and self-esteem in myself because I had to be of value if I had these ideas. True. And if I have these ideas, and I meant that God gave me the capabilities and abilities to, to um, you know, manifest it. Right. So, you know, the Quran, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Think and Grow Rich, um, you know, uh, by, by, by Napoleon right. Hill, mm -hmm. um, Sold on Ice. Mm -hmm. um, what is it called? Sold on Ice. Sold on Ice. I, I Sold, that one. Sold. Sold on Ice. Yeah, S O U L mm -hmm. on Ice by, okay. uh, by, by uh, Eldridge Cleaver. I heard that one. Um, yeah, you know, that book. Um, so, is that where you learned all like the, the spirituality, the. The energy about energy and connectivity and no so 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 again you have to you know you have to you have to pray for discernment you have to pray for wisdom you have to pray for intuition because knowledge true knowledge is is like is like puzzle pieces right and and one book may have one piece of a puzzle mm. the next book may have half of a piece of a puzzle the next book got the other half right. and then you got to accumulate all these pieces of the puzzle and then now you lay it on the table. And then God gives you the grand design on how to actually put it together and then decipher it. And then once you have that puzzle put together, that's a page. And on that page is information. Right. Right? And then, that, you know, that was the process for me, myself. Right? Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good job. So when did you get into boxing? Um, well, I've always been fighting. So, yeah. you know, um, always been fighting. So... Yeah, I always been fighting. You know what I'm saying? So, when did you get in like like actual boxing, like as far as the skill work of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, how hard is boxing as far as like the industry itself? You know what I mean? Like I, I hear a lot of shady shit go down in boxing. Mm -hmm. and I hear a lot of people um they're good at boxing, but they don't, you know, they don't get that opportunity because of politics. Yeah, so so um <laughs> I got to beef with a actual like boxer when I <laughs> this is a couple years back, right? What? And so he talking crazy to me, right? And you know he's a, he's not a bad guy, right? I'm not gonna say he's a bad guy, right? But he's like he's an agitator, right? Mm. And he like yo, listen, man, this shit ain't for you. He's talking, so he's triggering me. I'm like, I'll fuck you up. So I'm thinking, he tell, what are you saying that for you? The boxing shit or yeah, yeah like okay, just fighting okay. in the street shit. Okay. But that's how he is. That's how he talks. Gotcha. So we going back and forth on the internet, and he brings his friend into it. Right. So I call a couple of my guys. I'm on the Instagram live entertaining this stupid shit. I'm walking through it through, through his projects. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. On live, like, look, I'm like, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. ain't a motherfucking thing gonna happen to me. So we going back and forth. Then they they asking about me, um, and then 
So we on live. <laughs> and he like, yeah, I got some guys over here that said they know you. I said, what they know me for? Beating motherfuckers up? <laughs> robbing them? Knocking them out? Like, what? <laughs> and the right. guy on the thing that he brought to expose me is like, nah, your bro really like that. Uh. So they couldn't pull my card, so to say. Yeah. Right? Because the reason why I don't talk about certain details is because people get incriminated when they say mm -hmm. certain shit. Yeah, I've done a lot of shit and got away with a lot of shit, allegedly. So I'm not going to sit here and just give you certain... You motherfuckers start putting together dates and times and shit like that. Then before you gotcha. know it, you, you answer some shit that, that you shouldn't be answering to. Fair enough. So I think that he felt I was a fraud because of my interviews. Certain mm -hmm. people ask me, you know, certain questions about, yo, how old are you? Where are you from? And what's your name? And I ain't, bro, I don't know how to answer certain questions. Right. So I, I, I felt that he felt I was hiding something. So he went to dig. And when he started digging, he found out I was who I said I was. Mm -hmm. So all that other shit went out the window. Then it became about internet shit. Then he's like, yo, we're going to go in the ring. I'm thinking we're going to meet in the street. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to back out the hammer, pistol whip you. Dude, right. I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle you, bro. Right. Now I'm saying that's that's my mindset at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, "Nah, we doing it in the ring." It was confusing me because he talking all this gangster shit, but you talking about doing it in the ring, uh, and he really was just trying. He's really clout. he was trying to get some clout. Nah, he nah. just I don't I, I can't under the dude is different. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing I can say. He he can he can fight, so I can't. He's just he's just an agitator. He's people. I don't know. So I said, all right, fuck it. We're going to fight in the gym. So I said, okay, but I'm a train. Right. I'm an extremist. So if I do something, I'm going to do that 100%. Mm -hmm. So I'm training six days, sometimes seven days a week. And then now I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. And then so that was the thing that kind of like got me more into um, the skill set, the, the, the science of, of boxing, right? Right. Um, so but the other question a lot of boxers didn't have a life before boxing, mm. right? They just was in the gym, six years old. Yeah. I sold crack. Right. I took over blocks. I had them on crib in jail. Mm. I mean, so it's very hard for somebody just to tell me what to do, and I'm just going to say yes. Right. And that's what boxers do. Like a coach will tell them, you fighting this guy, you going to train like this. They don't ask no questions. Then they don't have an entrepreneurial spirit. So yes, the boxing game is 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 very corrupt. This is why Jake Paul, Logan Paul, these guys come in and make so much money, KSI, uh -huh. right? Because they have more of a of a unorthodox approach because right. they're not conditioned not to ask questions. They're not conditioned to say, okay, well, I'm gonna wait for somebody to find me an opponent, call my phone, my phone's gonna ring, then I'm gonna be paid whatever they offer me. Right. Then they, they got a mat. They got matchmakers and shit like that. So you got the promoter. Then you got the matchmaker. So the matchmaker, you know, calling you. Yo, hey, we got this fight coming up for you. Mm -hmm. Yo, you want to fight this guy four rounds, mm -hmm. twelve hundred. Like, that's it. That's how it goes. Oh uh, shit. So that's, that's 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 the politics in it. Yeah, and then so you know what I mean. Then you you fucked up. You ain't got nothing going on. So you like, all right, fuck it. Four rounds. You don't know who you fighting. Give me twelve hundred dollars. Mm. And they ain't try that with you, huh? Now, I mean, yeah, of course, I had like, but, but how, so how you how you get through that? Like how you? I just said I'm that? doing my own thing. Right. So, um, I started my own promotional company. Mm -hmm. I, I made a friend of mine get some licenses and stuff like that. I found out how much they was gonna pay. Um, like how much opponents get paid. And I said, okay, look, yo, I'm gonna offer you this much. Mm. Right. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna have an amateur background, so I said, okay, well, I'll pay you. What you what you get paid for in a match, I pay you for a week. Just spar. Let's let's spar. Right. So now I started paying guys to get that to get that experience. Mm. Took a trip to Mexico. Had a you know had a couple fights. Um. Now we got something coming up at the Prudential Center in New Jersey early. Uh. You know. Uh, next year. Um. But but for me, I was more comfortable with the business, mm. and I thought like, okay, well, if I get this venue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how much how much does it cost to pay the fighter? Right. We got that. How much does it cost to rent the venue? If I'm going through USA Boxing, if I'm going to pay some referees and stuff like that, get some insurance, what's the total price of that? And then, you know, we, we did our own matches. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. the next fight I'm doing is... Under, under your own promotion, right? Under my own promotion, but I'm paying to be on somebody's undercard. 
Gotcha. So you could pay like you get like you know how like they got showcases and open mics and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. Or you got a major artist and you can yeah. pay to open up. Yeah. You can pay to fight on somebody's undercard. Oh, I know that. Yeah. So um a fighter mm-hmm. I knew, uh uh it's crazy. His um I forgot his real name, but lucky he lefty some shit like that. He's from Brooklyn. He fought on the Josue Vargas uh, Zepeda WBC title fight at the Garden, right. and he only paid, I think, $10,000. Oh, shit. That ain't a bad. That ain't, that ain't no, a bad, hell no, because it's exposure. Right. It's exposure. Right. So, but a lot of the fighters, they're stupid. Yeah. So, yeah. So it makes it easier. It makes it easier for somebody to come in, and especially if they have money, to, 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 to take the bulk share or lion's share of the money. Mm. So you so you had the boxing, then you were an entrepreneur, bro. So you're an entrepreneur. Talk... Talk about, I mean, I assume like the, the selling of the drugs started the entrepreneur journey, right? And then you tried to, and then you made that legit. No, nah, being hungry did, man. Really? My first hustle was swiping metro cards and, and selling food uh, that I stole from the supermarket. Oh shit! You know what I mean? So yeah. it it just kind of you know everything was a was a um a a, a a a natural progression. Right. Right. So I'm hanging out with the older kids in the shelter. We not going to school. We in the day in the train station, they they swiping the metro cards. So mm-hmm. I'm watching them like, well, okay, you know what I mean. Eventually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm swiping metro cards with them. You know what I mean? Oh, that makes sense. They go in the supermarket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got a book bag. They go in the meat section, pause, and they take all of you know what I mean? Yeah, all the meat and run out. Shit. Then go to the, shit. They, you know what I'm saying? They go yeah, to the barber shop. That sounds familiar. Shop. Yeah. I'm like, oh, word, they got the steaks. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see my man. He's selling the steaks for three dollars. You know what I'm saying? So every pack of steak, three dollars. Damn. So I said, I bet. You know what I mean? Oh, this is what it is. I right, then I'm hanging out with the kids. They boosting. You know these cats out of uh, uh, Brooklyn, Fort Greene. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and it's crazy because what's happening now, motherfuckers been doing like the shit you see now on the internet. Yeah. That was some shit they had in shit. Fort Greene. Oh uh, yeah. Called, called uh, uh, the Steam or the Rush. Rush mm. crew, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah, it was like, it's like eighty motherfuckers from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Going to one more house. And you just so what? So what? What uh, entrepreneur journey you on now? Like what? Like what you got? Are you selling any products right now? Are you selling? Um, yeah, yeah, we any, um, any merch? um let's, let's let's promote that. Um, yeah, um, so I I got an audio book. I got an audio book coming out. I got an actual book coming out right now. We focus on a seminar. So if you go on uh, no labels tour right. um, that's my my website. You know, we got merch t-shirts there, et cetera, et cetera. That. Um, So my main focus, and I got some more products coming, but I don't really want to talk about it until I finish this Makes tour. Sense. But my, my main focus right now is is is, is the tour. We got some, um, we got a, a, um, I got a huge announcement. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make probably like January. Okay. You know what I mean? Look I got something I've been working on for a long time. Um, yeah, and we got the uh, the boxing gym that we about to open up too. So, um, I'm I'm, no. I'm I'm excited about that. I I, I ain't mean to cut you off. <clears throat> I saw you talking to a couple kids. They was used at the boxing ring, um, yeah. and you was talking to a young boy, and he was you know he seemed yeah. like he was upset. My coach's son. That was my coach's yeah, you, son. So you was talking to him, let him know, like, look, Line. yo, you you was in there, bro. You could not. He my phone. He my phone. And. Uh, and and one of the things I got from it, you telling this young man like you giving him affirmations, you let him know he great. Mm-hmm. How important is that for you know a, a young person to hear that? And what you gotta say about like the, to the youth now, as far as being great and not being distracted or not being so hard on yourself when you take out. Yeah, for sure. I think I think because you know, I didn't have that right. Right. So. Um, I think I think it's very important. And the message for, for I got for the young kids is how you think creates how you feel. How you feel becomes an emotion. Mm-hmm. That emotion becomes a vibration. That vibration becomes a magnet that attracts things to you, right? So you got to understand the power of thought and the importance of setting goals and setting goals early. Like I, I was having a conversation and alluding to that to my brother. That's my brother right there. We in a car. And I'm telling him, like, yo, bro, like, you, you, dude, you don't fucking realize that your, your life is fucking, uh, uh, fucking over. Mm. You, you, you can't be playing no games. Uh, you gotta be focused, right? And you know, and what, and I, I preach this and I teach this, but I, I tell this to my, my, my brothers, my, it's my blood brother, and I tell him like, look, bro, like you gotta set higher goals for yourself. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they say sins, 
passed down. Children pay for the sins of their parents, mm-hmm. right? right? You know, I'm, 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 I pay my debt. Right. You know, I'm, I'm done paying for my mother's fuck ups. Mm. I'm done paying for my father's fuck ups. Mm. I'm, I'm creating my own karma, fucking free life, and this is what I'm trying to get my brothers to understand. Mm. My grandmother, you know, my 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 great grandmother, which is my grandmother's mother, right? And you know, I did some fucking investigative work. I'm asking questions. I'm trying to figure shit out, right? Mm-hmm. Asking different people in my family. Well, I, you know, come to find out, my great grandmother, um, she 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 had two daughters, right? My grandmother's sister, I never met her, never knew her, and my grandmother's sister was treated better by her mother than my grandmother. So they they had a, a, a disconnect and a dysfunctional relationship. Mm-hmm. When my grandmother Ironically, had two daughters. She treated um, this. What, this is what my mother said. She, she said, "Well, she treated uh, 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 her sister better than my mother." Mm. So now it became like this this cycle of like the family being split. Yeah. And there was a whole group of people from my my grandmother's sister side that I never met because of my grandmother's fucked up relationship with her sister. And then now, you know, my. my my grandparents, you know, they had all these talents and all these ideas. And my grandfather on his deathbed told me out of his own mouth, hey, man, I didn't know how to raise a son, right? I, you know, I, I, I worked hard and your, your, your grandmother's family didn't think I was good enough for her. And mm. so my grandfather, you know, like died not even fully enjoying his life because he spent his life trying to take care of my grandmother, take care of his family and stuff like that, right? And we, we never had anybody to show us how to set big goals and big dreams right. and because I that's had, where I, that's where it start right and I had these and I, I had these big dreams for myself I you know and I wanted to go to the NBA I was really good at basketball right I was everybody in my you know all the guys in my family are very strong and very athletic right, right. all of us are athletic right um so I I'm fighting to manifest things that should have been conditioned for me to easily manifest mm. had I had Someone who knew how to raise a raise a young man. Yeah. So what I try to tell my brothers is, yo, bro, like you better be trying to be phenomenal, mm-hmm. not regular. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not meant for you to be regular. And the reason why you're comfortable being regular because you're allowing the older people in our family's limitations to become your own and the environment, right? So like I said, I said, um, I had this 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 rap song. I I, I didn't finish it yet though. Um, this is verse I was writing. I said, um, um, no competition, the only mission, achieve my goals. So clear I could close my eyes and still see the roads. I pray for wisdom, awareness slightly shifted my vision. I made mistakes on this journey. Thank God I'm forgiven. The youth is wasted on the young. I need partial percentage. Life a bitch and ain't fucking wrong, but my heart is in it. Realizing flaws I had inside came from my parents. The time it took for me to change won't take for granted. Subconscious jealousy they have for me. I feel it in my soul because reaching my full potential highlighted regrets they have for not reaching their own. Mm. Right? So my, my my success, right? Reaching my full potential highlighted regrets they had for not reaching their own. They regret not reaching their full potential. Uh, right? Right. And then now they resent me because I'm reaching my full potential. And I'm when I was in this process of reaching for it in front of them, they they shitted on me. They, mm. they 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 made me an outcast. They made me a black sheep of the family. They, mm. they they then they tried to brainwash my own brothers against me. Oh, don't don't listen to him. Why you want to be like him? And why you like the fuck? Like you know. So what I what I try to tell my brothers is stop letting their limitations become your own. You remember when we went to Brooklyn Bridge Park? So I outran him, mm. right? I'm I'm outrunning him. I'm I'm let's go, man. And he quit. He gave up. Right. We did another workout in the park. He threw up. You remember that? And the, f- the fact that he quit, that was our family's limitations Going out. being allowed to be imposed upon him. Mm. And that is the thing that I'm trying to break. Mm-hmm. I think we also try to break that. they have. Yeah. That I already broke for myself. Like I broke that. Like I, I, this year I'm making fifty million. Mm-hmm. I'm creating generation wealth. I'm not sitting here being regular. By this time next year, I'll be a world champion. I'm gonna have about three, four belts. I'm looking forward to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not I didn't allow my family. I didn't allow 
not having a mother. I didn't allow not having a father. I didn't allow, you know, you, you know, no matter how rough this road was, I didn't allow it to limit me or limit the goals that I set mm-hmm. or the type of goals that I set for myself. And then I t- teach my brothers that we all supposed to be together, can't be divided. We got to start creating strong families. Right, no, the family right? is key, like I bro. I told my brother, family he got this, 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 this shit. I'm not even shouting it out, man. Fuck your mic channel. He got this uh-huh. fucking channel. He told me, yo, I'm, I said, yo, look, bro, whatever I'm doing, you supposed to be on. Because mm-hmm. we creating a family business. Yeah. Right? Fact. We creating a, we, we creating something for this bloodline. Like, that's, that's the shit that, but he wasn't taught that. Mm. So I'm trying to tell him, like, yo, don't, don't let your family brainwash you, bro. Because mm-hmm. they try, they ain't brainwashing me. Right. No, family important, dog. I always say that. Like the biggest thing in our community is that. Wait, let me say this last thing too. And 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 for the young people, don't let them old goofy motherfuckers in your family divide y'all. See, you brothers gotta really be close. Right. Like you gotta really. It's your brother. Give a fuck. Squash that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a bigger fish to fry. Yeah. For sure. Like, you got to, like, listen, bro, like, you got to really be, like, you see what I, like, I bring you around. Sometimes I'm doing four or five interviews a day. We traveling. You know, he came with me to Atlanta. Right. He's seen my seminar. He was mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Right? He's seen the hard work. He see the sacrifice that I made for myself. Because he, he remembers maybe not, I mean, he knows my name, right? Like, he'll know, mm-hmm. like, oh, nah, my, you know, my big bro, he was no pushover. Yeah. Right? But I'm so happy that. I could show him the positive side. Right. I'm so happy that I could show him the the, the, the work side of it. Mm. I'm so glad I could I could show my brother right, like he could see like that's the important work and though. See me see me building this right, but also know why I'm I'm building it not just for me but for you but for us for all of us. You know what I mean? So now we got something solid to stand on. Right. Right. But as as a family as a collective, right. and if motherfuckers is trying to get us to go like this. That's not no family shit. All right. Now, that's a blessing within itself, though, because a lot of us, we don't get a chance to actually see our parents work. We don't get a chance to see our families together. That's what's really stopping us as a whole because mm-hmm. we, don't, we don't understand togetherness. We don't understand. We ain't, we ain't going to get there just by ourselves. Life ain't even meant for that. You right. got you got to have family. You got to have that, that, that spouse who believes in you and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely appreciate that. Definitely appreciate you um, giving this message. Very appreciate your journey. Appreciate your time, bro. Um, well, where where can they find you? Where can where where can they look out for? I know you talked a little bit about um, you got a fight coming up early mm-hmm. early this year or early next year. No, we got to five o'clock, man. You cutting early, man. You get inside of here, where, man. Where, 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 what time is it? Four twenty six, man. Four twenty six. Get inside early, huh? <laughs> Put a beat on the set, man. You from Philly, man. You say well, rap, y'all from Philly, bro. Come on, man. I know y'all. I know you want rap. What type of beat you want? Game, game got no Bluetooth for speaking in here, man. Yes, he yeah. do. He got some. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, tight. Let me see what you Put y'all on for me, man. Put them old Meek Mill jokes on for me, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, engineer right there. Let's get to it, man. Money, go live on your phone, man. All right. So I was going to do a little light because, you know, how many minutes we did? An hour? We did like an hour. Yeah, we did. We did. You know what I'm saying? We just right now hit you got a viral clip in there too, by the way. Just letting yeah, you know. I, I already know, bro. You did your thing. As long as you, you know what I mean? You know, as you're editing this on point, you're going to have something good, man. Nah, you Make did, sure you, you put the watermark for your shit in there. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. No, I've been, watch, I've been watching your shit, man. Yeah, after your manager reached out, G reached out to me. I'm like, this nigga, he's saying what he needs to say, bro. He ain't, he ain't holding back. He got. Yeah, facts. He got facts. something to say. Facts, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? A million percent. Let me see. Is Bluetooth is hooked up? Pick the beat. I don't know yet. Let me let, let me just let me go through that. Man, go to YouTube. You know so what you should have told me. I I you should have told me. I didn't know you wanted. Nah, to I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta make sure. You know what I mean, I, I keep my keep that shit going. Fam. You know what I'm saying, oh. keep the steel sharp. You know what I'm saying with yes, the, with sir. this with this with this this uh you know. You know I can flow, man. I know you can flow. I, I see Word, man. Musician. Nice, I man. Know Play box and all that. Let's gotta get it. to it, man. Somebody somebody told me last night, man. He was like, "Yo, man." This, this is what you wait for, man. Where you want to be in five years? Five years from now, we we're, we're smart guy. Yes, man. Be. Come on, man. Five years, man. I don't what, even think like that, man. Fuck, a year? Would you? How, how far you think out? Ain't about years. You got to be in the present, man. Present. All right, just, fair just, enough. just, just manifesting, fair manifesting, enough. manifesting, and maintaining the highest vibrations that I choose to man. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maintain. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, that's it. I mean, um, uh, man, five years out. from now, man, me and my brother's gonna be on vacation somewhere, man. Enjoying yourself. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. 
As y'all should. On a big boat somewhere, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bunch right. of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah, right, let's go. chat. Woo! <laughs> Ski! <laughs> yeah, boy. Ski, ski. What they say? What they say, money? Yeah, boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Getting to it, you know what I mean? 428, man. We got, we got, we got a little time, man. Let's see how this thing right, go, bro, man. Take your time, baby. Oh, you know what I mean? Hold let's on. Let's go. Yeah, shout out to... um. Shout out to So Special. You know what I'm saying? So Special Beats. Look. I said, look. I said, scars on my soul run deep. Like I got a million stitches, but I won't bleed. Slept on wisdom. Refuse to take guidance. Cause when you young, food for thought. Gives you the itis. Granddaddy died. Cousin caught a homicide. Grandmama praying every night. Bobby by side. No Dutch. When she sleep, I roll up with the pages. Think I got Proverbs 10 and my lungs. <laughs> Hard to stay sober when you going through hell. Got fish on the scale that never ate a worm. It come alive in a pot. Watch it cook, it won't burn. What you eat won't make me shit. I don't need tissue. Ain't no lions in this jungle. Just some demons with some pistols. Go hard, fuck a L, my. Find a way to win No's turn to yeses Got blessings Work we put it in It's never too late To be what you could have been Vest in a Glock That was a dress code Shooters got the best clothes Went from DIN numbers To Swiss account codes Shout out to my dogs With dog ears Only hustlers hear it Couldn't understand each word Without a hustle spirit Fuck waves Do rag was for the strainer Dog fool Two bitches It's in they anus Mama fell in love with a jaw I ain't never needed daddy Used to hide my old crack valves Inside of beef patties No help Just hustle Had to be the man Twelve ways Greyhounds A lot of Peter Pans Got popping you on the line Need a hundred now NASCAR in town I'm at the Dover Downs I got a spot I know the town Feeling like Meets in his prime Yeah I'm focused now Closed mouth Won't get fed I can't wait around Coops come decapitated Roof going Aston paper You know you stacking When your stash Got small faces Squall full of earnings Ain't no talk Take bread, fuck a pole, shit in the car, they're like a tank head, let it off in Queens. My homie in the A said he heard it down in bank head. I'm a miracle. My mama was a base head. <laughs> All I do is diamonds like the sun. Made money off a of tan. Konichiwa, konichiwa, I'm going to Japan. Used to put it in a pot, watch it stand up in the pan. Get it by any means. We was really robbers. Ski mask, mask on, renting spots with a chopper. Always did it big, but I ain't never know my papa. Used to eat the noodles, now it's lamb chop pasta. All my money clean. Cops can't knock us. See me on the screen. I probably get an Oscar. I probably get an Oscar. Money on your head, I pay the shooters, they gon' die for me. Lil' homie, I ain't tryna sleep. Hustle is inside of me. First class flights, homie, day ones, they gon' ride with me. Lil' homie, I don't hide and pee these pussy niggas hide from me. Um, hold up, hold up, Chan, hold up. Hold next joint, man. Shout out to hold up. Hold up, man. Talk your shit. I'm, I'm, I'm kinda rusty, you know what I'm saying? Talk your shit, bro. I'm, I'm kinda rusty, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? But I promise y'all this year, in 2024, I'm going to get right back in my music group. Mm -hmm. Make sure you make sure you give us your, where we can find you on Instagram. I don't know if you got TikTok. I don't know, but let, let yeah, us know yeah, your yeah. social handles, yeah, all smart that. Smart guy underscore, man. I ain't going to front. They, 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 they know where to find me, man. Smart guy, smart guy underscore. Un underscore, my bad. Smart guy underscore. Make sure y'all go follow. Make sure y'all yeah. support. Yep. Um, um, what you want to tell me? No Labels Tour. My number is 917-907-3687. 917-907-3687. Holla at your fucking boy. No Labels Tour. Go on NoLabelsTour.com. Get your tickets today. Get ready for 2024. We're going to help you get fucking right, man. Right. Yeah. Bigger Than Goals podcast, man. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share. That's another episode. Huh. God.